welcome to Gearock Farms. It's a wonderful winter day today. Thanks for checking out the video. We really appreciate it. On today's agenda, we got daily chores here to start off. It's gonna be busy, busy. And then we also got some projects in preparation for this uh, upcoming summer when uh, the cattle are out to pasture. So stay tuned for that. Hope you guys enjoy. Let's get into the video. Mariska, found another good place to sleep, huh? Mm. So this morning so far, we've been uh, cleaning out manure, at least I have. My brother and my dad, they've been taking care of the, the dairy cows. They got them fed up this morning and they they were probably halfway through milking. We're gonna keep cleaning up because the weather's kind of switched on us. We've had a mini heat wave here. It's been above freezing for the past day and a half, two days. So now we gotta clean because everything's getting sloppy. Take care of some of those bedding packs. But right now, the dairy barn, they're out of uh, a big straw bale that we keep stocked at the back of the barn. So I gotta go grab another one of them, throw it in there while the barnyard's relatively open. And then uh, we'll keep plugging along, keep getting things cleaned up. But like I was saying, we got a lot of cleaning to take care of due to the weather. So a little extra work to do today, but nothing terrible. While I'm driving by it, it reminded me, I want to tell you guys, we got a nice full calf hut and a bunch of different uh, colors, a bunch of different breeds. And everybody's looking healthy and happy. Super grateful for that. It's always a good feeling when your, uh, your calves are doing well. The future of the farm is doing okay. Cool to see that our uh, our calf hut kind of represents our mixed herd and we got a little bit of every color in there. It's great to see. like they're in the middle of switching cows so I'll hold off for a minute or so and help them switch. I think's in heat. She's been belly aching since last night. No one rides her, but she's kind of a tall one, so we're just gonna let her with the bull because our bull's getting awful big now too, so we don't let him with anything too small. Beautiful animals. They're always in really nice shape. They get so tall. Okay, well he's cleaning out the front side of this heifer bull barn, dry cow barn. I'm gonna let out this, this back pen. It's another lot to get them out of here so they're not in our way when we're trying to clean it out. Come on, 
girl. All right, now that we got both the pens opened up and all the cattle out of there, we're gonna focus on cleaning them out. We're gonna clean up these mangers as well. Get some new silage up here for them. So they got a nice clean pen and plenty of food in front of them. I got him opening some gates. It really works great when you got somebody with you. You don't have to stop and keep opening gates and moving cattle. You gotta take care of all the details. I don't think there's any frost in the ground here by us right now. That's the other thing. I'm kind of excited about this. It's gonna be a different kind of spring because of that. Cattle are fed, the dairy cows they're out back eating out of that big uh, hay feeder we got. I'm headed down back to the pile or the trench you could call it to grab the silage. But mid video here I wanted to remind you guys that if you haven't already make sure to hit that like button if you enjoyed it and uh, also subscribe if you haven't already as well. And sharing it that also helped and if you wanted to see more of us other than just on YouTube you could check out our social media pages all at Garrock Farms. And then we also have a P.O. box as well. And all that info is down in the description. So if you ever wanted to send us some mail, all that info is down below. Okay, so we're uh, about finished up the morning chores and now we're moving on to the, the afternoon project, the main project for today. Dad's been collecting materials and getting things ready. Tiny house, I guess you could call it. The generator hut. Yeah. <laughs> so if any of you have watched our videos from last summer, you know that we have a well and we don't have any power up there. So we need to use a generator, but we need to keep the generator in a half decent spot. It used to be in an old wagon with a roof on it. And the floor rotted out of that. and It's actually got an apron in yet. And we're thinking about, uh, redoing that floor and maybe getting it so with, with the beaters out maybe the apron to help on loads who knows someday but we got our plenty of material plenty of uh, leftover stuff from other projects this is a old pallet I don't know where this came from this is probably something where uh, something really heavy came on it at one time and all I made out of two inch oak some of the pieces came loose so we're gonna fix all them up get them nailed back down put some new screws through so everything's really nice and tight and secure then we're going to take these beams, and th these are from our old uh, heifer shed, our bull barn we call it. And there was a few of these uh, that were replaced in that building back in the 90s that I salvaged out of there, and these are left. So we're going to cut these in half, and we're going to get those under here like skids, get this up on it, and we use this thread rod to go down through the two of them, and so that everything's really secure so we can use our pallet fork to move it. That's kind of my theory. So then all we have is a place up there where we can just maybe a little bit with a shovel just to get it stable up there and the platform will be up higher and the cattle that come around it won't be able to really do anything to the generator or something in that way. 
It'll be out of the rain and yeah, and that's the thing. And then we're going to try to get some kind of roof deal. We're not sure about how that's going to come together, but something where we flip up. We got some old barn door hinges. I ended up finding some more of these old rusty hinges. I mean, we just got to clean them up a little bit. Be more than good enough, more than sufficient. Make a latch to hold it down. And it, and the reason we're making it a little heavier is because things like this, the wind. I mean, I've had the roof on my trailer up there get ripped off by the wind already too because it's it's kind of sticking out there on top of the hill so yeah and then if we wanted to move it or use it somewhere else you know we get some power outage situation somewhere we can just take the power fork and scoop it up and generate it all goes with and it'll be our generator house <laughs> but uh we'll bring you guys along with and uh keep updating you as we go We got our pallet assembled back together and now dad's working on the skids. update uh, we built the deck we got that all uh, bolted down and now we're trying to build this taller wall or one of the outer walls and it's uh, a little over 36 inches tall we got it framed up and we're about to put the plywood on I don't know it's going there was some roadblocks along, along the way trying to get it bolted down there always is you don't have a project if it to go smooth it's not really a true project then you have to think a little bit but nothing we can't get around, just takes longer. Yeah, so uh, we're gonna set the plywood on there, get it squared up, tack the plywood on, and then are you just gonna cut off your excess? Is that kind of the plan? Well, the plan is overhanging here so that it ties down to the deck, and then we just flush it where our top plate is. So really the plywood's gonna bond all this together. Like you said, we gotta make sure it's square, plywood on, and like you said, then cut the excess off. We'll have to think about that a little bit so we don't cut more off than we should because we we can always make it smaller but we can't make it bigger yeah we figured that out at one point in our lives For another update we got the one wall done our three foot wall and now we're working on our two foot wall it's a little misleading with this plywood on there but it only goes to about here somewhere so we're gonna we got it squared up we're gonna tack the plywood on there and then uh, cut off the excess again and hopefully in the next clip you see we'll have both the walls up and you'll get a better idea of what's gonna look like
so we've been at it for most of the afternoon and here's the entire structure with the walls up we're uh we're kind of getting the roof laid out here now and Daddy, uh, so now we can we can access it from uh, one end and then the other end will be a fixed wall this could be kind of a ramp but it's a little steep so so what we did is we can start our generator without opening this. The plan is to open the roof, prop it, put fuel in, start the generator, put the roof back down, have some kind of latch. But I got to make this really light or lighter. I don't want yeah, to so it's not too heavy to, so, uh, to lift it up over your head and, and latch it. We could store a couple other odds and ends in here if we needed to. I measured it. I think... Uh, Anybody like us could lay down in it if we really. This would to. be your doghouse someday. Yeah, maybe. yeah, if we could. <laughs> you know, <laughs> we were thinking ahead. Just you just never know these things. Yeah. But it will be up in the woods. You could spend the night up there before gun hunting. Yeah. So the tiny house association, they can hit us up now about <laughs> about this. I think I think we made it, especially once it has the roof on. So when you want to get dressed, you open the roof so you can stand up. <laughs> Yeah, you guys will have to keep a lookout for a uh, future video. We might have a clip uh, or a couple minutes talking about the finished product here. Didn't have enough time today to get it done. But all they think is left is just the roof. And well, some we got to the... get this roof. And I, I've got some leftover fascia trim from some other projects. I don't know if I have enough. But I think it might work. I even got some short chunks of steel from some of the other projects. So we're going to just try to do that and get a little overhang going here. We want to paint it probably when we're painting something else we got a big sprayer so if we're painting a barn or something we're going to get it all painted and then we're going to see if we can get owen to put some kind of logo on it you know yeah that'd be cool something uh he's usually pretty good with that stuff you know it's not going to cost anything extra that's how we're always thinking we've kind of been using scrap stuff that's been laying around here anyway yeah these panels were used in the calf barn as dividers those boards were used for concrete work and i'm sure they were used for something else before they were that probably used five different places in this farm yeah. you know that old pallet these beams used to hold that old bow barn together you know when you build something small like this you don't need yeah, you don't need to go out and buy. So all really, the stuff. the big, the only real cost is that hardware, all them screws. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if we ain't gonna have twenty bucks in this whole thing in our time. Stay on the lookout for the finished project. Let us know what you thought of it. Leave your comments, ideas. We. I'm to sure leave. they're gonna have a lot of ideas yeah. of what we haven't quite thought. Yeah, our critiques, things you'd add, things you'd change. Let us know down in the comments. But thanks for sticking to the end. Like, share subscribe, all that good stuff, and uh, check out our other videos.